guys. Today we're going to be working on this small engine here. As you can see, it's a three and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. So it's always good to just inspect your engine before you disassemble it and make sure you take pictures so you know how everything should go back together. Also, before you start working, you want to make sure that you empty the oil and the gas out of the engine just to make sure you don't leak any fluids. You also need to unplug the spark plug to make sure that it doesn't accidentally start when you don't want it to. As you can see, I got a few tools laid out. Here I have some sockets that I know I'll need. I might need some more. I have a screwdriver with a socket end, along with a couple socket wrenches, a few Torx bit screwdrivers, because I know I'll need those. I also have a pair of pliers. I might need those eventually. And then I have just a regular screwdriver with interchangeable bits. Lastly, I have my flywheel holder so I can easily take the flywheel off without it spinning around on me. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the spark plug here. I have a special spark plug socket that has a rubber insert to help protect the spark plug. And it says SP on it, which stands for spark plug. So I'm just going to put that in my socket wrench here and remove it. Next, we're going to remove the air cleaner box. As you can see here, it holds the air filter in for us. And below that, we have a metal cover, and we're going to remove that as well. So we're going to remove these four screws here. You also want to make sure that your choke is closed, just in case you drop a screw you don't want going into the carburetor. Oop, catch your tools. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and take this metal cover off. Try to keep all your parts and screws organized so it's easier to find everything when you put it back together. So now that we have that off, we can see the carburetor clearly along with the linkages um, that are controlled by the throttle and the choke. We can also see the gas tank and the exhaust. But first things first, we need to take the shroud off. So I'm gonna grab my socket wrench. I'm gonna loosen the three bolts that hold it on. There's one on top. There's one on the right side of the engine and there's also one on the left side of the engine. Once we get that off, we can see how this rope mechanism on the inside of the shroud works in conjunction with the flywheel. We can also see the flywheel here, along with the armature, which connects to the spark plug cord, and the governor, which has linkages that connect to the carburetor. The first thing we're going to do here is take the armature off. It's held on by two small little black bolts, and we're just going to use a socket wrench to remove them. So now we can disconnect the governor and the armature just by sliding it out of place like that. And then we'll turn the armature around and disconnect the kill switch wire. It's just a little wire connected to the armature, and we'll pull it out. And now the armature is free and we can set it aside. So now we can start taking a closer look at the governor and the linkages that connect it to the carburetor and the throttle controls. To start, we're going to be taking this small spring off from the carburetor, just because it's the easiest to get to. You want to be careful with all the springs and linkages because they can bend or break easily. Next, we can take off the throttle assembly. There's two small screws that hold this in, so I'll just use my Phillips screwdriver to get them off. Right down inside this hole, you can actually get to one of the screws. You have to align the throttle in the right spot to be able to get that hole in the right spot. You 
you want to make sure to take pictures of all your spring and linkage connections so you know how to put it back together in the future. To start, we're going to take this long linkage connected from the governor to the carburetor off. And next comes the choke linkage that connects to the choke and to the carburetor. Next here you can see under the throttle assembly, a small little tab holds the kill switch wire in. If we push up on that tab, we can pull the kill switch wire out. So once we have that released, we'll also pull it through the governor and now it's free. We'll set it aside. Next we can disconnect the governor from its linkage and now it's free and we can set it aside. And then lastly, there's a spring connected to this long linkage and we're going to disconnect that spring from the throttle. We can leave the spring and linkage connected and we'll set these three things aside. Be careful not to lose any of your screws and try to stay organized so you know which screws go where. Next we can remove the gas tank from the carburetor. We have three more screws connecting the carburetor to the gas tank, so we're going to take those off now. We're going to use the same Phillips that we used to remove the other two screws. When you're taking the gas tank off, be careful not to break anything on the carburetor. And also be mindful that you have a gasket there, and if the gasket's good, you can reuse it. So be gentle with it and set both of those aside. Also, keep in mind the location of this longer screw that actually goes all the way through the carburetor to hold the gas tank in. Next, we can take off the breather tube that connects to the carburetor and the valve cover. And then now we can get to the exhaust a little easier and now we can unscrew that. So now the last thing on this side of the engine is taking off the carburetor. It has two Torx bit bolts. So we're going to grab our Torx bit screwdriver and take those out now. Again here, you're going to see that you have a gasket between the engine and the carburetor, so make sure you take good care of that, replace it if you need to. While we have the carburetor handy, we should go ahead and take off this small side cover and make sure the diaphragm, spring, and washer inside are all in good condition. Be careful with the diaphragm as it's very fragile. If everything looks okay, go ahead and reassemble it the exact same way that you took it out. So we're going to go ahead and remove the flywheel. For that, I'm going to need my flywheel holder. I'm going to get it away from the magnet so I don't damage any of the more fragile fins. I'm going to make sure it's nice and secure so that I cannot turn the flywheel. Next, I'm going to grab my socket and my socket wrench and go ahead and loosen the bolt that connects the flywheel to the engine. Make sure you keep these pieces together. And most importantly, make sure you do not lose your flywheel key. The flywheel key will probably be stuck to the crankshaft and it's a small little rectangular metal piece. It fits right inside the groove on the crankshaft and it also fits in the groove on the flywheel. 
Once you get those things off, I think we're ready to move on to the cylinder head. So again, I'm gonna find my right size socket wrench and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the cylinder head bolts. Once you get it taken apart, go ahead and examine the cylinder head and the head gasket to make sure it's all in good shape. Next, we can move on to taking off the valves and the valve cover. So to go ahead and take the valve cover off, I'll grab my socket screwdriver and go ahead and unscrew these bolts. Here you'll find under the cover another gasket, so make sure you take good care of that and set it aside for reuse if it's not in bad shape. Now we can go ahead and remove the valve springs that hold the valves in. I do have another video on this, so I'm going to move through it rather quickly. I'm going to use my valve spring compressor tool, compress the springs, and wiggle the valves out. I'm going to repeat the process for the other valve. Now I'm going to move on to the crankcase cover. I'm going to go ahead and find the right size socket wrench and remove all the bolts holding the cover onto the engine. Once we have all our screws out, we can just give the cover a little nudge and hope that it pops off. Oh, there it goes. Now we can see inside the cover and inside the engine. Here you can see the bearing that fits right inside the cover. We can also see that we have a gasket. Again, if the gasket's in good condition, you can reuse it, but if it needs to be replaced, replace it. To get this bearing off, I'm going to use a puller. This puller pushes down on the crankshaft and pulls back on the bearing. As you can see here, I'm going to use a socket wrench to help turn the shaft that pushes down on the crankshaft. These arms here are going to pull back on the bearing and slowly slide it off of the crankshaft. Once the bearing gets free, the tool will loosen itself and you can freely pull the bearing off. Go ahead and give it a good couple spins, make sure it's in good working condition. And now we can see the camshaft and the crankshaft. Here you can see a tiny little dot on the crank gear lining up exactly with the little tab on the cam gear. That makes sure that the valves and the piston are timed perfectly together. We'll go ahead and slide the camshaft out and I'll hold the tappets for a second here. Here on the camshaft you can see the gear and the lobes. And then right under my finger here you can see the tappets. These tappets kind of look like smaller versions of the valves, but actually what they're doing is they push up through these holes here and they open and close the valves. The top of the tappet rides on top of the cam lobes, and as a lobe pushes the tappet, the tappet pushes the valve. Next, we're going to look at removing the piston assembly and the crankshaft. I can take off the crank gear real quick and set that aside. 
And then now I'm gonna turn the crankshaft just so that I can see the bolt connecting the connecting rod cap to the connecting rod. The bottom bolt also connects to the oil splash finger. So I'm gonna use my socket wrench and start loosening these bolts to disconnect it. So now you can see I have my connecting rod cap along with my oil splash finger and the two bolts that hold these things on. The last thing we need to do now is try to push the piston up to the top of the cylinder. I'm going to try to rotate the crankshaft and push the piston up at the same time. If I get it to top dead center, I can push my fingers and it'll pop right out. So here you can see I have my piston connected to the connecting rod. And last but not least, we can just pull the crankshaft right out of the crankcase. As you can see here, we have our power takeoff side of the crankshaft, our magneto side of the crankshaft where the flywheel goes, and in the middle is the crank pin where the connecting rod connects. Here's how the connecting rod and the piston assembly connect to the crank pin journal of the crankshaft. As the crankshaft rotates, it pushes the piston head up and down inside the cylinder bore. To recap with our empty crankcase, you can see where the crankshaft and camshaft used to go along with the tappets. And on the side here, you can see where our valve springs and valves used to be. On the top, we used to have a piston in there, a head gasket and some valves. And on this side, we had the armature and the flywheel. Be sure to inspect your crankcase to make sure it's damage-free and clean before reassembly.